comparison and sensor adjustment of the H10 Pro right there. This is the Stratus in my hand. Now the H10 Pro, unlike most leak detectors, comes with a refrigerant calibration bottle to check that your sensor is accurate and sensitive. Other refrigerant leak detectors do not. Infracon, Infracon is the manufacturer of the Stratus Detect that I have here in here in my hand. You can purchase, of course, separately. These are calibrated vials that contain refrigerant. It has like five grams of refrigerant in them. They have a calibrated leak at the end. And at 70 degrees, that's what their, I think that was the rate, 70 or 72 degrees was their rated calibration temperature at which they leak like a absolutely minute amount of refrigerant. I can't even remember the spec. You guys could go look this up because you guys who are interested and want to know better, you guys look this kind of stuff up. You research it and you purchase it and make sure that you are better than the other guy down the street. For you guys who are either choose to not learn anymore, spend anymore, or want the quickest, cheapest way out, this video is not for you. This is only for the guys who want to be better than somebody else down the block and find leaks. So right here, I just finished the calibration and I don't need to show you all the details, but you can see when you take your leak detector, you will pass it just over the surface of the hole without stopping and without touching like that. So you stay up, say like three eighths of an inch, a quarter inch. Now you'll see this red light right here go into the green as I go over it. Did you see that? And did you see how far away I was? I did not touch it and I did not stop over. It was just a pass over. That's how sensitive this is. Now this solvent that is in here, this refrigerant is not detectable by the Infracon DTEC. This, this company, Bacharach, developed for this sensor, this heated diode sensor. And as you can see in here, you see that red hot spot in there? That thing is glowing red. There's a zirconium sensor inside there that's uh, plated with a di uh, different metals. And as the vacuum pump sucks up the refrigerant and it passes over that heated wire and that heated uh, material in there, it's doped and it produces a voltage that the sensor picks up and then you get an audible and a visual indicator. On the Infracon, right now I have it set in super mode if it will focus on it without blurring out because it's kind of bright. And you come over here, this is 134 right here. That was 134, and this is, R, this is R1234YF, right there. That's R1234YF. So these are reference bottles for calibrated for testing your leak detectors. Now let me get, now what I've noticed, I have a new sensor coming. This sensor in here is many years old. I think it's time for a new one. Here's R134. Let's see if it'll focus on this. Let me let you see some part numbers for you guys who are actually interested in upping your game to the next level. You will see, here's all the part numbers. So you can do your own reference checking. And this is the YF refrigerant right here. As you can see, it says YF. That's the YF refrigerant. And you go on Infracon's website and you will find these. And you could go, actually, you don't have to go to Infra. True Tech Tools has these. I forgot about that. I got these through True Tech Tools. So come over here. Now that was a little slow. That's why I ordered a new sensor because I'm getting slow on the YF detection. But one thing I do notice when I go into other guys' shops, their leak detectors don't pick up anything at all many times. Now, this is the YF refrigerant. Did you see how, how high, how sensitive that this instrument can take us into the next decade for the new YF refrigerant? This thing has not fallen out of favor for being very sensitive around the YF. I was actually really surprised. 
Now let's go to the 134. Now I have to remind you, this sensor is many years old. Just a little uptick. And that's why I ordered a new sensor. Now I could make this sensitive enough by, there you go. You see that heater adjustment right there? I can turn up the heater and this is an old secret. It's not too much of an old secret, but every, where did I put my screwdriver? Well, I lost it on the mess, but I can turn up the heat on this sensor and make it more sensitive, but you burn out the sensitive, uh, you burn out the sensor faster. You shorten its life. But when you're in an area and you really want to find a very small leak, temporarily you go through the recalibration process. I have it in auto, I have it on small leak, and then you go through the recalibration process. That's all handled here. Mybacarac.com. Let's see if it'll zoom in on there. And this is the manual for the MyBrack, and they have some setup procedure videos. So you could go to my backrack on Backrack on YouTube to look up their procedures. You also could download the catalog. If you miss, if you lost your original instructions, it's right here. And under section three, you could go through the procedures for setting up, where's section three? Come on. Did I, no, I didn't pass it yet. Two, 2.7. 3.1 heater adjustment right there calibration and performance so you go under the calibration and performance and it'll walk you through step by step how to properly a lot of guys have these and they've never ever recalibrated their sensors they're going around looking for leaks with a leak detector that's no longer sensitive and that's in a lot of guys they lose these or they no longer have the liquid in them and because eh, they cost a few dollars, I think they're 50 or 80 some dollars, uh, they don't buy them again. But what good is a leak detector if you don't know it's working properly? And 99% of the guys out there have refrigerant leak detectors and they have no way on hell to learn how to calibrate them or even test them. No, cranking your tank and letting a little refrigerant out and then sticking it inside the refrigerant cap or taking a cap off and sitting it out that is not a calibration check. That is not a calibration check. These are a calibrated check with reference bottles that have been set up by a laboratory. This is a calibration reference bottle. You're out in the shop, old boy, redneck, yeehaw, turn the valve and stick it in there and get it. No, that's a leak like Niagara Falls, the size of a bus. So that was a short video. Reference for your adjustments on here and you can see how 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 sensitive this h10 is for yf i was really surprised for me just to pass over like that there it goes that's super sensitive because this is calibrated to a very very small leak per year we're talking grams all right, guys, I will see you later. And this is the infamous old H10. And as you see, I'm taking it apart to clean it out. I was testing the battery and uh, it's getting service for this upcoming busy summer. And uh, I just got a brand new sensor in my Infracon a couple weeks ago. It finally, uh, after a little over two years of continuous use every day, it finally went. And uh, you always carry backup. Even uh, here's my backup on my Testos. And of course, you guys the other day seen the backup on all my field piece sensors and uh, putting new batteries inside here. All right, catch you guys later.